someone who's got nothing to lose in front of him. And he, he almost wants to, I know, I'm sure, wants to tap the back of his bike and do the old classic. Look, stick with me, I just need to close down and roll and then I'll let you get laps of Moto2 action and a good start from all those on the front row. Good from Fabio Di Gian Antonio. Now you'll see them aim towards the inside of Turn 1. And look at that from Bobier through and he's going to lead. Cameron Bobier is leading the Grand Prix in the States. He's going to run it a little bit wide, however. And through comes the Ralph Fernandez, who is very hard on his teammate there. There, but it's going to be Fernandez from Gardner in second place. Bobio is going to be forced to sit up again and loses another couple of spots as Di Gian Antonio and Bezecchi come through. And it's as they were pretty much as they set off. But Bobio, what a launch. You can tell he means business today. Yeah, he tried to get that stars and stripes right to the head of the field. He just ran a little bit wide and it did cost him through those first uh, changes of direction. So he's been shuffled back to fifth, but that's the highest he's been in lap one at any point this season. So he just needs to settle in and chase these boys at the front. Watch from on board with Remy Gardner through the bump of turn 10, a little bit wider line from Fernandez to try and deal with it, then into the first gear corner of turn 11. Did Dan Antonio maybe thought about a move, maybe defending from Marco Bezzecchi as they head on to the long back straight for the first time. Three quarters of a mile between turns 11 and 12. Both of them first gear corners as Bezzecchi switches to the outside of Di Gian Antonio heading down to 12 and surely Di Gian Antonio will have the line in there as Bovier got the braking though on Bezecchi here he comes Cam Bobier is going through and at the front also a Remy Gardner oh he came through on Fernandez, but Fernandez had the power managed to lay it down out of the corner a little twitch wasn't it from Gardner as he tried to stay in front of his teammate yeah it looks like Remy wants to get through straight away he wants to control this race but Raul Fernandez is having none of it so he wants to lead from the front as he's done so well in recent races uh, looking further down the order, Jake Dixon's held on to uh, 13th place. Sam Lowe's has gone right back to 23rd. I don't know what's happened to the Brit, but unfortunately his weekend's gone from bad to worse as he pushed right down the order. I feel like Gardner wants to hit the front and have one of those races from the front like he had early on in the year. He's just got to find a way through past his teammate Ralph Fernandez. One lap down as in the final corner he gets ever so tight between Marcos Ramirez on the 42, the American race racing team having a brilliant start to this event. Fabio Gian Antonio blasts past Gardner as they head up towards turn one. It's Fernandez leading, here comes Bobier. He lets up the break for a second time and Bobier up into second place. What a start to the race from the American. He means business today. John Hopkins said it on the grid. He felt the podium was on the cards. Digi's back up the inside. Oh, Cameron's going to get the cut back. He is, surely. No, but Di Gian Antonio there, I thought he just let, let it off too much and had to run wide and somehow stayed in it. This is not what Remy Gardner wanted to see. Riders in front of him who have nothing to lose. He's got everything to lose as Bezecchi looked for a way through on him. And Fernandez is streaking away at the front. All that jostling for position, costing them time and letting Raul Fernandez get away at the head of the field. So they can't afford to do this with Raul's speed this season as Fabio gets it all on the move down through turn 10. And Bobier bumped and shaking his way through turn 10 down to turn 11 for the American now who squares off nicely he is a previous winner uh, in Motor America but only oh, all the way back in 2015 when that uh, series was first conceived did that uh, Bobier win here so uh, over the years Tony Elias beaten him a number of times at this racetrack but he's got the slipstream out from underneath uh, Fabio Di Gian Antonio he's definitely got the braking performance too Cameron Bobier up into second place is he going to run it a little bit wide he may well, but he's going to hang on. Bobier's up to second. The Gian Antonio will fight back. And Remy Gardner will hate watching this in front of him. Remy's going to slice it in under. He does. He cuts Cameron Bobier up there. And obviously that wipes the nose of Cameron. But all this back and forth is just what Raul Fernandez wanted. So it is costing them time. But for me, Cameron Bobier looks aggressive. He looks fast enough to be there. But it's new for Ditchie. He's never really raced him, never battled with Cameron right at the head of her field. And with that Stars and Stripes logo, it looks fast and it's going to be fast, isn't it, when Cameron Bovier's in this kind of form. Fernandez out front now. The gap has opened up to over a second over Fabio Di Gian Antonio. What did Gardner get wrong in this corner on the previous go around that Di Gian Antonio was past him before we even got to the bottom of the hill? Yeah, it was strange. I didn't actually see if he had a moment, but he lost a lot of drive out onto the straight and it let both uh, Digi and then Cameron come up the inside into turn one. So it's a lot more settled this time around. Things settling down further down the order. Jake Dixon just dropped a position into 14th place. Uh, Sam Lowe's is back, still back in 23rd. It's not going to work for him this weekend as we switch to our race leader, Raul Fernandez. As things stand with Remy Gardner 
in third spot. He would claw more points back in the championship, nine to be precise. 25 would be the gap. Don't forget, still another three rounds to come after this one. And Raul said to Natalie earlier this weekend, oh, the championship's done, not even thinking about it, because Remy can just ride home. He can, you know, he can finish behind me every race. And well, even if I win all of them, I'm not guaranteed in the championship. But that's all trying to play the mind games yeah. on his teammates. Trying to deflect the pressure a little bit. But the problem is, if Digi gets in the mix, Bobier, Bezeki, and all of a sudden that Remy Gardner's not standing on that podium, the point swing can be huge then, and it can go towards Ralph Fernandez. So as things stand, it would be a 25-point advantage heading into the last three races. So it's still all to play for. And the word of warning is that we are in the early stages here. When we get to the latter stages, there's a couple of laps to go, the tyres are going to start. They'll last. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Everyone having moments. Marcos Ramirez having to pick up there. I was just watching him try to tip the bike in. He had a couple of goes at it and thought, yeah, I probably have to uh, let the brake off here. That all resulted from Bobier was late on the brakes, came in onto the back of Gardner. Then it looked like Bezeki got sucked in a little bit. And then behind oh, that. Oh, the Gian Antonio's gone out. The Gian Antonio's gone to see a concert in the stadium there because he has uh, just lost second place and dropped back to fourth behind Cambobier in that extremely tight and nasty turn 15. And that has allowed Gardner to get a free run now in front of him to try and chase down Fernandez. What I was trying to say before uh, Marcus Ramirez ran off track was. Uh, and before uh, Digi did this was, this race isn't going to be decided until the end because things like this will get more and more frequent it as the race like goes on. Had a little moment as he back shifted and locked the rear and then he had to pick it up a little bit, just straight line it and uh, obviously that cost him two places. But Remy on that lap, he looked like he was he was back down to point nine, but in the last sector, Ralph Fernandez really strong, stretched it out another two tenths. Tom luti has gone down and that's at turn 19. That's a fast left-hander. As Tom walks away, actually has seen a resurgence in form recently, but he was just in behind Sam Lowe's and the previous winner at this circuit. In fact, he won the last time we came here in Moto2 and he crashes out, he crashed out of 24th position. It just shows how all this championship has changed in the last two and a half years. Cameron Bobier in third place. He couldn't, could he? He couldn't do the miracle of winning at home. It's very possible. I do think that the gap that Raul's starting to stretch out might make it a bridge too far, but he's well positioned in this podium fight at the moment. He does look good. He has done all weekend. Even Freddie practice thought he looked good, but didn't quite have the pace. He's worked hard every single session, improved that pace, improved the setup, and now he really believes he's in there, in the battle. He gets a good run, and actually, nothing wrong with his aerodynamic package on that machine and he's strong on the brakes into turn 12 and listen to the crowd lit up by the performance here of Cameron Bobier, five times a champion in America he's a champion he knows how to do it he knows how to win races win race after race he's dominated seasons where he's won at 90 percent of the events over here in the United States and so he gets onto home soil and what we've seen he is a Sunday man Gardner's going to come straight back at him he doesn't need someone who's got nothing to lose in front of him and he, he almost wants to I know I'm sure wants to tap the back of his bike and do the old classic look stick with me I just need to close down on roll and then I'll let you get stuck in <laughs> it looked like a slight mistake from Fernandez at turn 15 he was wide we were on the onboard shot but it looked like either he was come back for a very late apex of the Americas in the USA 3.4 miles of bumpy treacherous asphalt for Raul Fernandez to negotiate for one final time he has been impeccable throughout the weekend fastest on friday in mixed conditions fastest on saturday when he went on to take pole position and he is in line to take a third win in a row fabio di gian antonio and marco bezecchi two italians should join him on the podium augusto fernandez uh, is closing on bezecchi but i think it's a too little too late and cameron bobier we have to quickly just talk about the ride that he's put in michael because in fifth place, that is his best result in Grand Prix racing. Yeah, by far and away. So that's a really strong performance. You can see he's still in that same shot as the leader. That's a really big step forward for, for Cameron. We've talked about his potential and his speed and being at home, he's definitely raised his game this weekend. He'll have wanted to stand on that podium. No doubt he'll be slightly disappointed, but a top five, it's a really strong result. And it augurs well for next year. What they said the difference was this weekend was he's coming to a track that he knows and it makes such a difference. He's qualified well and just look what he was able to do in the early stages, scrapping with the best of them in Moto2. 
So there is Fabio Di Gian Antonio in second. Marco Bezzecchi is going to come home in third place. That's his seventh podium finish of the year. But it's all been about Raul Fernandez again today for the third race in a row. The young Spaniard, 20 years of age still, in his rookie season, let's not forget. From Madrid in Spain, come over to the USA to ride here in Moto2 for the first time. He's only been here once before when he came in Moto3 at the very start of his career in the World Championship. And he comes back this time and he's going to take victory. A triple threat from Raul Fernandez as he takes back to back to back wins in Moto2 and reignites the championship challenge. Remy Gardner has to stand, as you can see him in the top left of the picture, at the back of the garage and see his teammates stroll to the line.